Hi, my name's Kate. I'm a serial and serious networker. I built my business on word of mouth recommendation via networking. I've also been on the receiving end of many presentations explaining what networking is about and how to do it properly. But in my experience, some of the statements made need to be taken with a pinch of salt. Or as I put it in my summary, real life does not always fit the PowerPoint. So to start, what do I mean when I talk about networking? Networking is when business people meet in order to meet. So it isn't a project meeting or attending a talk, although the coffee and chat session before the talk might well be networking. Some networking follows a highly structured format. Some is very informal, like the coffee and chat I was talking about. Some networking requires you to pay membership fees. Others are just drop in, pay as you go. For example, in Stone Market Chamber, we run both slightly structured breakfasts and informal coffee mornings. And like Isbar's informal meet the members sessions, you don't need to be a member to attend, although members get discounted rates. But if you are meeting for meeting's sake, how can you justify taking business time to do it? Well, that depends on you and your business. For example, a lot of net businesses do network in order to build and maintain close, dependable working relationships with other businesses on the basis that people want to do business with people they know, like, and particularly trust. So in this case, I would to make the time to network so that when these other businesses come to place orders, I will be uppermost in their mind. And maybe they'll recommend me to others. Nothing wrong with that. But this isn't the case for everybody. However, there's an oft repeated myth that networking is all about the business. The business that's referred to you by your network. And it's only successful if it generates orders. In other words, one size fits all. That's simply not true. We're not all the same size and shape, and neither are our businesses. In my experience, people go networking for all sorts of reasons, and generating business is often not the reason at all, particularly for smaller businesses. So why else do people go networking? Well, I've carried out informal surveys in several networks, formal and informal ones. And the top reasons that people give me vary in order, but the top four start with getting out and meeting people. As more and more of us work from home, this is becoming a major factor. And I think many of us have become very aware of this over the lockdown period. We're social animals and we need to interact with one another. Now, it's true that some of us are more like cats than dogs. We want to meet with people when it suits us and on our terms. But all of us want to be able to meet, get out of our caves, go and meet with other people occasionally. Social connection is important for our mental health. Second is getting help and support from others. Sometimes we need help and support from other people in the same boat as we are whether we're discussing the latest technological developments or the difficulties of getting paid on time. It's good to hear from others about what's going on and how they're dealing with the issues. And maybe we'll have some ideas that will help them too. For myself, I value the chance to discuss with other professionals issues outside my field that my clients have shared with me. For example, is this, whatever it is, something we ought to be worried about or not. If it needs attention, where should I go for help? And when is a Google search appropriate? And when should professional help be sought? Third one, talking in your peer group. However we define our peer group, 
as other people in my line of business or other people in business in my area, for example, it has a different dynamic to many other interactions and is often more relaxed. When we talk to customers, we have to remember that they are customers. Just as when we talk to suppliers, we have to remember that they are suppliers. And the same is true for talking to our staff or to talking to our boss or the bank for that matter. So talking in our peer group with other like-minded people is very important for many people. And fourthly, and this is a strange one, for a number of people who work from home, going out into the business community reaffirms that they too are real business people. It'll be interesting to see how attitudes change in the coming months, but historically, working from home has been treated as though it meant you weren't taking business seriously. It was almost a hobby. And if you are one of the people who has turned your hobby into a business, it can be really important psychologically to recognize yourself as a real business person. And that means going into the business community. So those are the top four. Does this mean getting business isn't important at all? No, no, that's not true either. In each of the networks I surveyed, getting business emerged as a reason, eventually. People would mention getting business directly from other group members or being recommended by them to people outside the group. But they'd also mention networking in order to get good, reliable local suppliers. And for some people, finding business partners for collaborative working was really important. For example, in one case, a copywriter was looking to meet a web designer. Uh, in another, a print broker wanted to meet a graphic designer. So networking isn't just about the orders you generate and the money you make. It depends on you and your business. Nevertheless, networking is an investment of your time and attention. So it's important that you know why you're attending each network and that you create a strategy for getting what you want from that network. And you withdraw from that network when it's no longer appropriate for you. So for example, if you network in order to generate business, you will need to look for a network containing potential customers and potential introducers. The individual people in the room matter far less than the businesses represented. On the other hand, if you work in isolation from a home office and want to get out to meet people, you'll be looking for a warm and welcoming network comprising people that you feel you have some connection with. The actual businesses in the room probably don't matter too much, but the people do. If the people change and you no longer feel so welcome, find another network. The important thing to remember is that if you are networking for social connection, or to offer and receive support, or to meet with like-minded people, or be part of the local business community, then another myth, you don't need a killer 60 seconds. You just need to be able to explain briefly and clearly to other people what it is you do. And you don't need to exchange business cards frantically with everybody else in the room. But you might want to meet up for coffee with another member, just occasionally, just to find out more about them and build that connection. And you know what? You'll enjoy the networking a lot more. And as you relax, people will get to know you better. And you may even get some business from it. So wherever you do it, enjoy your networking. <laughs>